The burn comes when you cry. It starts to come when someone dies. The pain you feel as your eyes swell and tears fill up in the wells. The burn starts to choke you up. Words come out slow and shaking. You close your eyes and wonder why that there's a burning when you cry. When Owen left, it felt like hands around my throat. I couldn't talk, I couldn't see. The burn overwhelmed me. My heart is heavy. This is why. You get the burn when you cry. It digs down deep. You cannot sleep. You toss and turn in your sheets. Awaken with sobs and wet pillowcases. You wander aimlessly, look into the sky. You feel the burn when you cry. The WWF roster have gathered on the entranceway to pay respects to Owen Hart. It's the 24th of May 1999, the day after Over the Edge, and Raw is taking place in St. Louis, Missouri tonight. Along with the WWF roster, we have also got officials, agents, backstage staff, and the McMahon family. Everyone stands for a 10 belt salute in one of the most heartbreaking moments you'll ever see in a pro wrestling show. A video then plays on the Titantron that was narrated by Vince McMahon and it touches on Owen as a professional, a family man and a friend. And before continuing on, because I know it's going to get brought up in the comments, many people, including members of the Hart family, believe that this show was nothing more than damage control. The investigation was yet to truly begin and a lot of questions were still unanswered. I am not watching this show as an investigative journalist or someone wanting to sensationalize the tragedy. I'm watching it today the same way I watched it back in 1999, as a fan who lost one of his all-time favorite wrestlers. If you're looking for all the details surrounding the investigation, then this video won't be for you. This video is covering Raw as Owen from start to end and that's it. The guys and girls giving tribute to Owen on this show wanted to do so out of respect. It would be very disrespectful of me and silly of me to talk about what they said and try to recap heartfelt words coming from people who actually knew the man. So you're going to hear the audio from those tributes in this video and I'll jump in to cover the matches that took place on this evening. Finally, there were more tributes recorded for Owen that didn't make it to Raw but did appear on other shows such as Shotgun and Heat. If you want to see every tribute in the best possible quality, you'll need to pick up the Owen Heart of Gold Blu-ray which is going to become hard to obtain soon, what with the WWE closing down its home media division. So if you want to hear more tributes and more stories about Owen, check out that Blu-ray before it becomes hard to find or very expensive. Owen was um, my son Dewey's favorite wrestler. My son, he, he, first few years of his life had very, he had long hair because of my wife liked it that way. And one day I was on the road and I called home and he was all excited and he said, guess what dad? He said, I look like Owen Hart now. Because Owen had just uh, gotten a crew cut and my son was so proud to look like Owen Hart. And um, he and my daughter, Noelle, would break into little chants of nugget, nugget, just for no reason in the car because in their little minds they didn't know that that was a, uh, you know, a, a, uh, a negative chant to Owen. They, they thought they were honoring Owen. And uh, I, I was proud that my son wanted to look like Owen. And if he could grow up to be a, a man like Owen Hart, I would be even prouder. Owen was, was the nicest funniest person I think that that I've ever met and he loved his family and I think that they should know that he talked about them warmly and with love and affection and I, th I think there's probably a special place in heaven for Owen Hart and uh, I like all the other guys will miss him and and we loved him. You know, Owen took a lot of kidding and, and a lot of ribbing from the guys about uh, how cheap he was on the road, how much uh, 
uh, money he saved. You know, he spent in a month what most of us guys, most of us guys spent in just a few days. But the reason he did it was because he wanted to retire early and, and spend time with his family and his kids. And um, I hate that his kids don't get to grow up with uh, such a great father that he was. I, I hope that they realize nothing can replace uh, the loss of a daddy, and especially one as good, good as Owen. And, but I hope they realize when they get older what a great father they had. Uh, he's a terrific guy. I, I in no way pretend to miss him like his family will, but. I'm going to miss him a lot. God bless him. Superstars who wanted to give tribute were given the opportunity to do so on this evening and the guys and girls could also choose if they wanted to wrestle. Jeff Jarrett and Tess decided to do both and our first match sees Owen's tag team partner wrestling the union's big man as the crowd settle in for tonight's show. Jeff grabs a microphone, he says Owen never was a nugget and what you'll also notice is that everyone on tonight's show is wearing an armband in memory of Owen Hart. We see the Jackie Fargo strut after a leapfrog body guillotine, Tess ducks a clothesline and Jarrett takes a big boot and as the match goes on Jerry Lawler says this is a very difficult match for Jarrett due to all the built up emotions he must be feeling. A sidewalk slam puts Jarrett on the mat, Tess goes upstairs but Double J gets a boot up. We see Jeff single arm DDT or jump an arm breaker if you prefer but Tess replies with a gut wrench powerbomb and it looks like Tess has it won. Deborah jumps on the apron, Tess gets distracted, Deborah then slaps Tess and this gives Jarrett the opportunity to hit the stroke. The match ends with Double J applying a sharpshooter and Tess submits to Owen Hart's finishing move. Both Jeff and Deborah seem relieved they have gotten the match over with and our show continues on with more wrestlers paying tribute to Owen Hart. Uh, you know, basically uh, I haven't been in this business a long time. You know, I've known Owen probably about a year, year and a half, and uh, in that time period, he's probably the one person that, you know, could walk into a locker room and things weren't going right and liven everybody up. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you just look back and see all of this, the little things that he did to, you know, entertain people. And even at his own expense, he, he'd go out of the way to, uh, you know, put himself down to, to I guess, rib somebody. and. Uh, you know, in, in and out of the ring, he was probably one of the best guys around. Uh, he could always lighten up the mood and you know, just, like I said, just the little things. We did an autograph session in Toronto. Uh, Jeff Jarrett disappeared, so I had to fill in with him, and we kind of just uh, sat there, and he made the fans just laugh and were telling him about his match and what he was going to do tonight and kind of, you know, basically giving away things, but uh, that's just what he did. and. For him to go out, uh, you know, he, he loved the ring and loved being in the ring, and it's kind of, I don't know if it's ironic or what, but uh, I just I feel for his family and his wife, and I hope they can look back and, you know, just remember how great of a person he was and uh, never forget, and I know I won't. X-Pac and Kane took on The Broods, Edge and Gangrel next. Owen's final match was a tag team encounter against Edge and Christian on the 22nd of May. Edge was a little hesitant to go straight after Pac and this paid off when he was able to pull off a spinning wheel kick. Gangrel likes what he sees but X-Pac pays his opponent back with a fantastic spinning back kick. So in comes Gangrel and Kane to continue the match. The Brood team up to plant Kane with a double DDT but the big red machine just gets up and Edge takes a tilt at world backbreaker. Christian comes into the ring and he too suffers the same fate and it now seems Kane and X-Pac are finally on the same page as Kane tags in his partner and X-Pac performs a few kicks in the corner. Edge misses a corner splash and X-Pac pays tribute to Owen with an enziguri. Not a common X-Pac move at all, although you definitely think it was. The match ends with Kane and Gangrel getting tagged in and Kane takes to the skies with his signature diving clothesline. The big red machine then takes out both of his opponents and Edge gets set up nicely for a bronco buster. Gangrel gets choke slammed. Kane then slams X-Pac on top of Gangrel and the tag team champs win on Raw's War. Kid looks to the camera and he says, I love you Owen, and Raw then goes to a commercial break. Well, I think that uh, 
Owen wouldn't be very happy looking down on us now because for somebody who was constantly trying to get a laugh out of everybody, he's making a whole lot of people cry. Um, I thought Owen was one of the truest, um, most honest, faithful guys that, that I know, and, and uh, he gave us all a lot of happiness and a lot of good memories. I, uh, we had this hair thing going, Owen and I would wake up in the morning and have my hair out to here, and he would actually come to the buildings and try and get his hair to look like that. And, uh, he was always making us laugh somehow. And uh, uh, I would wish that he could hear us now because I would say that, Owen, we love you as friends, and uh, you meant and mean an awful lot to us. In a business where uh, you often see the worst of everything. You see the worst of everybody's personalities. We're like a family. We're around everybody at their best. We're around each other at their worst. Owen was always one that was at his best. He was always up. It's never a piece of trash. Owen was always there for everybody. To make you laugh. To make you mad. He'd rib you in the ring and Make you so bad you wanted to choke him. He's the only guy that had the balls enough ever to, on a live pay per view, to, at the Royal Rumble, to schoolboy me and backslide me and not let me out and <laughs> we had laugh, make me laugh more than anybody in the ring ever. Loved his family. Talked about him all the time. Um, he's one of the guys that you really felt was true about that. Lived for his kids and his wife. Um, Owen will always. a place here for me, with me. You always be my friend. And I love you. And I'll never forget you. I've been with the World Wrestling Federation for 16 years and known Owen here for 10 years and out of everybody, everybody's this is a great company to be in, but Owen was just that special person that could always make you laugh, always make you smile, where he wanted to make sure that everybody had a good day. And Owen was just the top guy, cared for everybody. I've seen Owen go in his bag and take pictures out and go back outside of the building, autograph them for the kids. He was just a great family man, loved his two kids to death, his wife. He's just one one of the best. I used to referee, have fun with him, tie my shoes together when I went down for the count. He just loved to play and carry on. Just just a great guy. And I tell you what, we got we we really lost a great person, a great person. Owen, you'll always be in my heart, man. More tag team action next as the Hardy Boys take on Takamichi Noku and Shofunaki. It's good to see Kantai back on Raw. 
Matt Hardy takes a forearm shot and Taka tags in for some double team action. Hardy takes a drop kick while locked in a camel clutch, though Taka's tornado DDT gets easily countered. Jeff tags in, Taka takes some punishment in the opposition's corner, a free birds chant breaks out as the action goes to the outside. Jeff flips over the top rope and he lands back first on Taka, and back inside the ring the Hardys team up for some poetry in motion. More double team action from the Hardy boys keep Taka away from his corner but Jeff then misses a corkscrew moonsault attempt. This allows Taka to hit his Michinoku driver and Taka finally makes it to his corner. Sho Funaki fires up but he doesn't get much of a crowd response and when Funaki ends up on the outside Michael Hayes sets Sho up for a drop kick from Jeff. We see Taka's crossbody to the outside but the Hardy boys were just too good on this night. Matt pulls off the twist of fate which was just known as a neckbreaker at this point and the Hardy boys secure their first win as a tag team on Monday Night Raw. Owen will always be remembered as a great practical joker and as well as a tremendous performer in the ring. He provided a lot of people uh, numerous hours of entertainment inside and, and outside of the ring and I'll always remember Owen Hart for being a great friend and a wonderful uh, father and husband to his wife and kids and uh, I'll miss you very much Owen. A couple things I remember about Owen Hart uh, that stick out in my mind the most is uh, you know Owen was a tremendous family man he loved his family and yet, uh, when he was on the road, we had such a good time. You know, he was a prankster. And, and a funny story to tell you is that uh, every time we would come to Kansas City, Missouri, Harley Race would uh, invite all the guys over for some chili and barbecue and stuff like that. And one day, Harley, we all came over, and Harley built uh, or uh, cooked a big, giant pot of chili. And while Harley was outside checking on his barbecue, Owen slipped in there got a whole bottle of hot sauce and dumped the whole thing in there. So you know what happened there. I mean, everybody was, the mouth was on fire. Harley got mad. So Owen's over in the corner and he's laughing. We're all giggling, laughing. Harley brings out his stun gun, one of those little shocker deals, and goes after Owen. And you should see, you should have seen Owen just, I mean, he was going crazy. It was the funniest thing you ever seen. So kind of, the, you know, the pranks that he used to play, it backfired on him. It was a funny evening, and we're going to miss him. I love you, Owen. I know you're in a better place. Ken Shamrock vs. Bob Holly takes place next on Raw is Owen. If you haven't noticed, all storylines have been put on hold for this show and it does give us some interesting matchups. It's just a shame that it all stems from the absolute worst circumstances possible. Shamrock points to the heavens before stepping inside the ring and the action begins with a takedown from Shamrock followed by a northern light suplex. The two reset, Shamrock finds himself in a headlock but Ken's able to roll Bob up for a pin attempt, only scoring a two. We see a running back elbow from Ken followed by a jumping leg lariat and a hurricane runner. Ken then brings Holly down with an arm trap and there it is, ankle lock submission. Ken wins on Raw's War. It was a very short match but credit to both men for still going out there and performing tonight. Ken Shamrock in particular was a good friend of the Hart family and it was Owen's brother Brett who looked after Ken when he made his WWF debut. Ken didn't speak any words for Owen on this night. He preferred to pay tribute by wrestling this match. You know, it's it's hard to you know to put it in words, but it's it's just like when I leave my family at home, this is my family went away from my family. They, we all love each other, and we love Owen very much, and I and he knew it, and and it hurts a lot, it really does, and we're gonna miss him a lot, you know, and that's all I can say, you know, it's just hard to put it in words, except we're gonna miss him. If I had to share a moment with Owen, uh, it'd have to be this story. It just happened a few months ago. Uh, we all came into Chicago, coming in to do a double shot, which is two shows in one day. Uh, we landed in Chicago, and it was really bad weather, a lot of snow, so they canceled the, the first show. And uh, the office told us to sit tight and relax and find out if we're going to 
be doing the show later on that night. So as I was sitting in my hotel room, the phone rang, and I picked it up. And the guy on the other end said he was uh, the, the head man running the stadium where we were supposed to do the show that night. And he was told that I was the man to talk to whether we're going to go ahead with the show. Well, I kept professing to this man that I'm not the guy to talk to. You're talking to the wrong guy. You need to talk to the office. He said that various guys were canceling and said that I was the last guy to talk to. What did I think? Uh, after a few times of telling him I didn't think too much of it, and I told him that, again, I wasn't the man to talk to, he said, the last words he said were, well, I'll tell them Tess said to cancel the show. And I said, hey, buddy, don't bring my name into this, and he hung up the phone. Well, not till this morning I found out it was Owen. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's pretty funny, but uh, it's, it's kind of a hard way to find that out. But all my memories of Owen are very good, and uh, I'll never forget them. Thanks for all the memories, Owen, and uh, God bless you. Thanks. Badass Billy Gunn versus Mankind. Billy goes back to his old DX days before the match begins. If you're not down with Owen Horn, I got two words for you! Mick Foley, Owen Hart's traveling buddy, must have been feeling charitable tonight as he gives Billy a clean break in the corner. Billy doesn't afford Mick the same hospitality as JR and King tell Owen stories on commentary. Jim talks about Owen stealing his hat at three straight television tapings and King brings light to the mixed emotions surrounding this show. It's supposed to celebrate Owen, yet it's difficult to remain up and in good spirits. Billy Gunn moons Mankind and I'm not sure if that was the most appropriate thing to do but it is the Attitude Era and I guess that excuse works for everything. Billy takes a back body drop and he ends up on the outside where Mick rocks his head off the ring steps but back inside the ropes Mankind takes a low drop kick and BA then focuses all his efforts on the leg and knee. Billy attacks in the corner before taking Mick down with a chop lock and Billy then goes out of the ring to grab a steel chair. He thinks the crowd are cheering for him as he lifts the weapon into the air, but they're actually cheering for Mankind who just pulled out Mr. Socko. Billy takes the mandible claw while on the apron and the referee calls for the bell. Strangely, Mick's defeated Billy here via countout. Mick then grabs a microphone to pay one last tribute to the King of Hearts. Owen Hart, this one's for you. In this business, I guess you got a lot of acquaintances, but very few friends. <laughs> and Owen, he was one of those friends. And, and and there's a lot of funny stories, his personality, the things he used to do. And I've told my wife a bunch of times over the last couple of months that I've been with Owen on the road. I see Owen more than I see her, my little girl. And he said the same thing. And now that he's not here, it's it's you look at it almost selfishly that I don't have my buddy and my friend with me anymore. I don't know, Owen's in a better place laughing and cutting up. But when you really think about Owen's life, I think about integrity because in this business it's cold, it's callous, it's selfish, it's self-serving, it's unrealistic. His wife and kids. <laughs> Three of the luckiest people in the world. Because he loved them more than anything in the world. And that's why he did what he did to provide for them. And he did it with integrity. And integrity in this business is few and far between. Uh, that's not a good thing to know, but it's the truth. 
and outside all the laughs, because on the road, without the laughs, you know, the fans get to see Owen 10, 15 minutes a week. But when you see him 24 hours a day for 10 and 12 days at a time, uh, he's one of the guys that made it fun, made coming to work entertaining off the camera, and that's just as important as on the camera. Owen. <laughs> I'll make the promise to you. Because you got two little kids and I've got a little one of my own. <laughs> As they grow older, the only thing that they might have to find out what their dad was like is wrestling films. But I've made a promise to myself as the years go by. I'm gonna do my best to let the, to let Oge and Athena really know what a great man you, you were on. That's it, I can't, I don't know. Owen Hart, uh, where do I start? Uh, Owen was uh, the leader of a little merry band of Canadians we call the Canadian Mafia. And uh, to me, Owen um, was, was a, a type of guru to me. He uh, helped me on the road when it came to uh, traveling or, or a match. But uh, the thing I remember most about Owen Hart is uh, his ability to make me and uh, anyone else laugh. And when I think of Owen, um, I smile. Today it's a little bit tough. Um, but I, I think of some of the things Owen did, and I had the pleasure to uh, wrestle Owen in his last match in Chicago, along with Christian, against uh, him and Jeff Jarrett. And uh, I knew Owen was in a, a good mood that night because he came out with his blue and white boots and his uh, black and silver and red outfit. His hair was all messed up. He had a goofy look on his face, and he was wearing his Time for a Change t-shirt. and. Uh, he got on the corner and he started hitting poses and uh, flexing. And uh, we got into the match and um, I had him in an arm bar. And he kipped up and uh, he wound up and he gave me a big judo chop with a high yah and chopped me down. And uh, we had a good time that night. Um, and that was Owen's last match. Uh, and it's nice to be able to you know, look back on things like that. Um, you know, he, he just, he made us all laugh. And he's going to be sorely missed. Um, I grew up watching Owen. And I, I uh, got the opportunity to uh, wrestle on pay-per-views on TV and all across the world. Uh, Germany, Raw, you name it. I wrestled Owen. And I traveled with Owen. And... Uh, to his family, Godspeed. Um, we're gonna miss you. Dilo and Mark Henry take on Bradshaw and Farouk. We have members of the old nation of domination starting off with Farouk struggling to put Mark on the canvas, but Mark does go down after a few kicks and a jumping shoulder tackle. The big man instantly replies though with a power slam. D'Lo and Bradshaw get tagged in and Jim Ross makes light of Bradshaw having a fight at baggage claim recently. For those unaware, Steve Blackman kicked Bradshaw's ass at an airport because Bradshaw showed allegiance to the giant robot monster. As big Justin Hall continues to dominate D'Lo, Jerry Lawler talks more about this fight between Bradshaw and Blackman and Jerry says that he, Jack Lanza and Owen Hart just laughed when it all went down. Farouk gets tagged in, he takes a face buster and soon afterwards he takes a kick to the chin. Mark Henry then gets a tag, he absolutely destroys the acolytes. And when Bradshaw and Farouk fight back, D'Lo manages to get a blind tag. The match ends when Bradshaw inadvertently kicks his tag team partner in the face and D'Lo scores a pinfall win. But Farouk doesn't seem to care all that much. Ron Simmons stands in the ring and he raises his own hard armband as the production team get ready to air more tributes from Owen's friends and colleagues. With 40 years in a business, 
Uh, I've seen a lot of wrestlers, and Owen was very special. Owen, in my estimation, was one of the best performer in the business. And Owen was not only good in the ring, Owen outside of the ring was a marvelous person, a great person. He was fun to be with, he was a pleasure to be with. He would be missed greatly by people all over the world. And all the years that I've been around Owen, and all the years that I travel around this business, I have never met anybody that disliked Owen. Owen, I want to thank you for being the person that you really were. I'll miss you. I remember Owen. I always remember Owen. He was, uh, no matter what kind of mood you were in, he always made you laugh. And he was a, a big ribber. He, he, he pulled harmless ribs, and he'd even rib himself to get a good laugh out of everybody, <clears throat> to rib somebody else. But the one thing that really sticks out in my mind, what he did for me, was about three years ago, we had a show in Mobile. And, of course, Mobile is my hometown. And he volunteered to put me over, you know, right in the middle of the ring. And that's what I really remember most about him. But Owen never had any enemies. I mean, he was the kind of person that you could be around all the time. He was aggravating sometimes, but he always made you laugh. And uh, he may be gone, but he's not forgotten at all. And, uh, He'll always be remembered. The Godfather vs. Road Dogg is our next scheduled match, and Road Dogg doesn't bother going through his usual pre-match promo routine. Instead, he says this. You know who I am! It ain't about me! It's about the King of Hearts this evening. The Godfather's brought some of his employees to this tribute show, but at least they're wearing proper, respectable attire. Godfather gives Road Dogg a choice. Instead of fighting tonight, these two can take the Godfather's women, head to downtown St. Louis, and light it up all night long. Road Dogg thinks he and Godfather should blaze it up while telling some Owen Hart stories, so the match doesn't take place, and instead, the competitors decide to leave the arena to go talk about their dear friend. I thought this was good. I can see why people wouldn't like it, and I'm sure many people believe these two should have really wrestled, seeing as it is a tribute show. But in a way, Road Dogg and Godfather felt there was more value in talking about their fallen comrade rather than beating the tar out of each other. So yeah, it's fine. The matches so far have been really short anyway, so it's no big deal in my opinion. He will not grow old like we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary him, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember him. Goodbye, old buddy. I think everybody would agree that Owen Hart's probably one of the funniest guys that ever walked the face of the earth. Um, he's definitely the funniest guy I've ever met. Uh, he's got a different sense. Of, he had a different sense of humor, but I mean, just I just the guy is so funny, man, and. He's in the in the ring, just one of the best ever. One of my one of my favorite guys to work with. Uh, you know, we walked in here today, and uh, man, everybody's crying. Walk in here, and just I mean, the tears start rolling, and. Uh, It's just, a, it's like a, a freaking nightmare, you know, I can't believe he's gone. And, uh, man, we're going to miss him. I don't know I'm going to miss him. Uh, just want to say a prayer for uh, his wife and his family and his two children. 
want to say Owen Hart is one of the best guys I've ever met in my entire life. And I miss you, Owen. Triple H looks up to the heavens before walking down to the ring to face Al Snow. Snow, meanwhile, seems a little more subdued than normal during his entrance. Al's tribute to Owen is included on the Heart of Gold Blu-ray, by the way. Al goes down after a shoulder block, but he fires back with a jumping leg lariat. Al stays in control when the match goes to the outside, but back inside the ropes, Triple H pulls off the Harley Race knee. Hunter goes to work in the corner and when the time's right, China interferes with a forearm to Al's face. Triple H then performs a suplex, followed by a knee drop. Just when you think Al's done for, he manages to fight back with a few headbutts while dropping Hunter's arms, but he misses a moonsault after body slamming Hunter in the middle of the ring. Our match ends with a pedigree from Triple H and Hunter looks at the camera after the match to send a message to Owen. He says, we love you man and always here while pointing at his heart. It's gonna be hard. It's a little, uh, little soon to ask me about Owen. If you ask me, uh, I just got to know Owen good in about the past six months, and I got to know that he's a lot like me. He has two children, and he was a good man, and he did this business so that he could provide for his family. I'm sorry, Owen. Somebody already said it, but you are in a better place, and I do love you, and you will be missed. And I'm praying for your family. You know, I always looked at Owen Hart with a lot of respect. One of the reasons why I looked at Owen is being a younger brother of a superstar such as he was, I could relate to Owen. And I always knew the drive that was inside the man's heart to be an outstanding wrestler and to go out and give the crowd, the fans, everything that he possibly could. And when you look at an Owen Hart's career, he did exactly that. He tried his best to go out and entertain everybody, and I think he succeeded every night that he went out. Owen Hart would never, never cut anything short. He gave his effort every night for everybody, his family, his fans, his friends, that's how I'll always remember Owen, as somebody that never cut corners, somebody that you could look at, always share a laugh with. But when it came time to go in the ring, he had one thing in mind, and that was to go out and make the people happy. Owen will always remember you for that. Thank you for your memories. Goldust took on the Big Show next and the match was over in a matter of seconds. Goldust tried to sacrifice the Blue Mini right here but Big Show had no issues at all taking out both guys. He breaks through a double clothesline attempt and it's Mini and Goldust who end up hitting the mat. And just like that, both Goldust and Mini take the showstopper and the Big Show pins both men. Complete destruction from the Big Show tonight on Raw is on. Okay, I'm gonna probably cry all the way through this. But um, I'd like to say a few words for Owen, because I want his kids to see this when they grow up. But the short time I've been here, I've spent a lot of time with Owen working with them and traveling and stuff. And, and no matter if it was a bad day or good day, I was having him always be happy and cheery and, and make me laugh. And we'd do autograph sessions. and. And he'd always mark all over my hand or in the limo. He'd always make up these funny words and kid with me. And it's funny, you, you tend to take people for granted because you're always with them. And then I remember yesterday, I was so upset because I felt like my shorts were, were too tight on me or too short. And he was like, oh, Deborah, well, maybe you should change. And I remember that was like the last thing I was saying to him right before he, he left to do his match. and And... And then like this morning I looked at my sheet and we had all these autograph things to do together this week and you know life is, is very very precious and and you should really you know not take people for granted and I would like to say that that Owen you've really touched my life and, and brightened my day the time I've been here and the, all the blue blazer things we work together in the autograph sessions and I will definitely miss you 
and and I loved you as a friend. We had great times, and I still can't believe you're gone and you're not with us anymore. I keep thinking, I keep looking for you. And it's just gonna be hard now to walk out with Jeff and you're not with us at the house shows, making all those jokes and, and, and making Jeff and I laugh. I'm gonna miss you a whole, whole lot. But I just want your family and your kids to know you were a great guy. And I felt honored that I could have worked with you all this time. I love you, Owen, and you will always be in my memories. Owen was always the prankster. I mean, you do a prank to Owen and you're getting one back, you know, tenfold. I remember Bret Hart and I, about 10 years ago, we were all in Chicago and Bret and I were out down at the bar and Owen, the blazer at the time, when he first came in, went upstairs early because he wanted to go to sleep. And Brett and I were hang, hanging out and we decided to go up and wake up the blazer, as Brett would say. So we went upstairs and, you know, we peeked in because Brett and Owen were sharing a room and then we tackled them. And next day, Brett's boots missing. <laughs> My stuff somehow winds up in the shower. But uh, the McMahon Hart family goes back so many years and Owen, you, Owen, you will be truly missed. Godspeed. Our final match of the evening features Val Venus taking on The Rock. Time's running out on the show, so this match was rushed quite a bit, but both men shared some words about Owen before the bell rung. Owen Hart! Every single one of these people are here to celebrate you. Owen, it's with great pride that the most electrifying man in sports entertainment can come here tonight and entertain you. <laughs> Owen, this is your night. And damn it, you know The Rock loved you like no other. So it's with great pleasure that The Rock, along with the millions and millions of The Rock's fans dedicate the people's elbow to you tonight. One time, Oj, if you smash! What The Rock is cooking. Venus's immediate game plan was to go after Rock's broken arm. Rock took a punch to the face before Val tried a wrist lock, but this was easily countered and just like that we see the Rock bottom. Rock looks high above while taking off his elbow pad and the match ends with a people's elbow. Time was running out, the program had to end, and so this tribute show concludes with Stone Cold Steve Austin walking down to the ring to give Owen Hart one last toast, a final send off for the King of Hearts. Steve and Owen didn't have a great relationship, the SummerSlam 1997 piledriver and what happened afterwards caused friction between the two men. Austin was never going to refuse this opportunity to set a beer down in the middle of the ring for Owen though, and Raw goes off the air with Stone Cold looking at Owen's photo on the Titan Tron. As a fan, it was really tough watching this all again. Reliving the war really is reliving everything, as you guys know, and I think covering this all again as an older person makes you pay a little more attention and you think about things in a completely different way. Back then, I couldn't grasp that Owen was gone, but now I wonder how it must have felt for all those guys and girls in WWF who worked and travelled with him every day of the week. This goes for any wrestler who passes away really, and not just Owen. I sure do miss Owen too, but I miss him as a pro wrestler, someone who entertained me as a kid through his work inside the ring, and after watching this show, it becomes clear as day that Owen was more than just a pro wrestler. Every one of his colleagues said he was a special person who wanted to make people happy, and if we all tried a bit to make each other happy, then I'm sure the hardships of life would be just a little more tolerable. We all spend too much time being miserable to each other, you know? So thank you Owen Hart, thank you for entertaining me as a fan, nearly 25 years later and we haven't forgotten, we haven't forgotten at all. Ladies and gentlemen.
and gentlemen, all I can say about Owen Hart is I hope that I can be as good a man as him so that I can see him again someday. JR learned a valuable lesson from, from Owen Hart just last night. I went up to the ring and I, I held Owen in my hands and his, his head and I knew right at that moment that if Owen could have one more thing, he would want one more day to be able to tell his wife and his kids how much he loved them. And I realized, don't ever leave home without telling the people you love what you think of them. No doubt about it. We love Owen Hart, and we love his family, and we'll always miss him. And we're proud, ladies and gentlemen, to be a small part of this night for him. You cannot stop the rocket. Two time Slammy Award winner! I knew it! I'm a winner! I did it! Woo! Choose, so fuck your system, suckers are this them, and when they die, nobody will miss them. Fractal side all across.